Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am super excited to finally have this DIY video up and ready for you guys to view. This is such a fun and easy project and it's super, super cheap. And you know I love my cheap projects. This is hopefully going to be the first of a another birthday DIY series, but I don't want to go too much into that because who knows, plans might still change about where I'm going in the direction of this birthday party, um, but that's still not until February, so we got some time. But I had started this DIY a little while ago just to test it out. I loved the way it came out, so I wanted to be able to create this video and share this project with you guys. So without further ado, Let's get started. As you saw from the thumbnail and title of this video, today we're going to be making some prop books. For my material, I'm just using a Pampers box we already had lying around. My mom, bless her soul, loves stocking up on sale items, so she bought us a ton of diapers, and these boxes just happen to be the perfect size for this project. I went ahead and already cut one side to flatten it out so we can begin cutting out the pieces we need for our book. I really didn't have a strict preference to the size of the books I was going to be making. I honestly was just letting the boxes I had available kind of dictate the sizes for me. So in the end, I really would have books of different sizes, which I think actually adds to the authentic aesthetic that we're going for with this project. The first thing we're going to do is cut out the cardboard we'll be using to create the cover of our book. And when I say cover, that includes the front cover, the back cover, and the spine of our book. I wanted that entire piece to be used from one flat piece of cardboard that hadn't been yet folded from being in its original diaper box form. So I'm cutting off all of the sides and also the part where there's an overlapping cardboard flap just because I don't want to deal with any of the ripped cardboard. Now we're going to measure out how wide we want to make our front and back covers. For this particular book, the width of my front and back cover is about 7 inches each. The height has already been determined by the piece of cardboard I was able to cut out. So what I'm going to do is measure 7 inches from both the left edge and the right edge of my rectangle, and then draw lines to indicate where each cover ends. That middle gap we're left with is going to be the spine of our book. Once those lines are drawn, we're going to take our box cutter and the help of our roller to score the cardboard. This means that we're going to be cutting the surface of the cardboard, making sure not to go all the way through. Make sure you get the entire line scored, and then this way we'll be able to fold our book, as we all know books do. So this next part is optional, but I definitely recommend doing it. I'm actually going to score two more lines onto the spine of our book. These lines don't necessarily need to be spaced out evenly, but do try to get it as symmetrical as possible. If you're working with a wider spine, consider scoring more than just two lines. Adding these extra lines will allow us to curve the spine of our book a little bit, which again, I feel like just adds to the authenticity of the final look of our project. Our next step is to measure how thick our book will be in its closed position and how big our quote unquote pages are going to be. Hold your book in its closed form, keeping the front and back covers as parallel as possible, and then measure from the center point of the spine to close to the edge of the side of the book that opens but not quite all the way. Now we'll have to measure the thickness of the book as well, keeping in mind that we're measuring inside the cardboard and not including it. The book I'm making is about one and seven eighth inches thick to about six and seven eighth inches wide, leaving maybe a quarter of an inch for the inside cover to be exposed once my faux paper is put into place. Now we can cut two pieces of cardboard out using these measurements and that'll create the top and bottom of our faux stack of pages. After we have those cut out, we're going to take one of those pieces and give one of the ends a little curve so that it can fit nicely into that slight curve that we create in our spine. I just freehanded one of them and once I was happy with the way that the curve was, I layered it against the second piece that we cut out to use as my template. and give that piece that same curve as well. Now we have to measure out how long that last piece of cardboard we'll be using to create our faux pages needs to be. To measure this, I just stuck the two pieces I already cut into the places I plan on gluing them, and then measured the length in between those. The thickness will remain the same for this last piece. Now we can put the pieces together. 
If these pieces all of a sudden look thicker, that's because this portion was actually filmed when creating a different sized book, since I apparently can't break the habit of forgetting to press the film button. Um, but all the steps are the same, and the sizing is just a little bit different here. We're gonna hot glue it all together, and the most important part is to make sure that the brown side of the cardboard is facing outward. As cute as that baby is on the Pampers box, we want all of the picture and the wording and the color hiding on the inside of our book. Add a strip of hot glue to the straight edge of one of the shorter pieces, and then attach the middle piece. I actually also cut out two small rectangular pieces of scrap board as well, which I'm going to hot glue into this corner to add some stability and to help keep those corners at a nice 90 degree angle. Repeat this on the other end and add hot glue as necessary. Just make sure that the hot glue stays on the insides. The only exception is that I actually also intentionally add a strip of hot glue to the end of the shorter pieces of the cardboard since it has those little gaps that cardboard tends to have. We're actually going to be painting this entire piece in our next step, so I use the hot glue to fill in those holes just so that the paints can actually have a surface to hold on to. I'm just using some white washable paint that I picked up at the dollar store, and this is literally all that I spent on this project, you guys. Grab a small paintbrush and take small dollops of paint and just start painting each side. You're going to want to use just enough paint to be spread over the entire side without covering it so thoroughly. And by this, I mean you can still see that hint of cardboard color poking through. This part was actually really exciting for me because this technique was a total accident, but it works so perfectly. Once you have paint lightly covering the entire side, you're going to take your paintbrush and give it one long, smooth brush stroke across the entire length of the cardboard. And this is what's going to give us the illusion of our full stack of pages. You can add more paint in certain spots if necessary, but again, just make sure to go over it one more time from end to end with a single brush stroke. Keep your stroke as straight as possible, but honestly, don't worry about it fluctuating a little because again, that's what pages of a real book do over time as well. And there we have our faux pages. Isn't that awesome? I definitely think so. And I was super, super thrilled when I first did this and saw how it came out. I honestly thought that I was going to have to go in and lightly draw individual lines of this, but the brush strokes do way better of a job than I could have done just trying to draw individual lines on there. So while that's drying, we're going to go ahead and give our book a cover. I'm using an old t-shirt that we were going to get rid of anyway. You can use paper or some other material if you like, but I really liked using t-shirts because of its texture and stretch. If you do decide to use a t-shirt or some other fabric, just make sure that you iron it first. Nobody wants a wrinkled book. Lay your cardboard cover down onto the t-shirt, making sure the clean brown side is facing down. Then start cutting out the fabric, giving yourself maybe an inch or so of extra fabric around each side. Begin by gluing the middle of one end of the fabric about an inch into the cover of your book, and then turn the whole thing around and do the same to the opposite side, but first give the fabric a little pull so that your cover can be nice and clean and tight. Once you've got the middles down, then you can finish off the sides, but just leave the corners for later. We're also going to repeat these steps with the two longer sides of the book. Once we have all of those sides down, now we can work on the corners. We left it for the ends because we're going to be giving it a nice crisp 45 degree fold before we glue it down. Tuck the excess fabric all the way into the edge and then fold that extra flap you've created in half to make that 45 degree angle and hot glue and press down as flat as you can. Now we're going to add our faux pages and really see our book take shape. Play with the placement of your pages in your cover until it looks centered from both sides and the pages go all the way into the spine. Once you're happy with its placement, hold it in place, but tilt it a little bit towards you so that you can add a strip of hot glue between the cardboard page and the fabric cover. Then hot glue the sides down, keeping the cardboard pages as parallel to the edge of the book as possible. Next, we'll add glue to the curves and press it against the spine of our book. 
finish closing the book off with more hot glue and touch up any spots you have missed. Because we used cardboard, we do have a little bit of wiggle room if we need to try to wedge that tip of the hot glue gun in between the pages and the cover to add a little more glue once the whole thing has been closed. Now is the time to get really creative and come up with the titles of your book, which is so much fun. Again, I'm just going to be freehanding mine and using a fine tip black sharpie to design the spine. But if you like, you can look into stickers or stencils or something like that if you don't feel like freehanding it or if you don't like your penmanship. Once you see all of my books together, you'll definitely see a theme coming through among the titles, which I think is just so much fun and such a cool idea for a party display. This book is going to be called The Case of the Terrible Twos because it is for my daughter's second birthday, and we're going to add her initials here at the bottom as if she were the author of the book. I'm going to finish touching this up off camera because it's much easier for me to do when it's super close to my face. In the end, this is how the books turned out. I've only done these four so far, but want to have maybe two small stacks of books to display. I might also play with adding some more colored covers or even colored titles for the spines, but we'll all just have to wait and see. For now, I absolutely love, love, love how these came out. And the best part is, once the party is over, I can totally just disguise them into my real bookshelf instead of tossing them out and making all that effort go to waste. Please leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please give this video a big thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that notification button, especially if you liked this video and you liked this project and it does turn into a birthday DIY series like I did for Layla's first birthday. You're gonna wanna stay tuned and make sure you catch those next videos. Thank you guys again so, so much for watching. I appreciate you, I love you, and I will see you in the next video.